And uh, thank you for being here today. And hopefully that we're going to have a, a good time and a good conversation together about career choices and the possibilities that it presents. I've got two wonderful teachers that are going to help present. And um, I'm going to share my screen right now. And again, I want to remind you, if you haven't already, to uh, put your name and the organization you're with in the chat. And now you're seeing my screen, correct? Everybody shaking their head. So again, um, welcome. We're thinking about we would like to maybe do a series of. Um, to address sea level rise and climate change, our tribe is focused on improving. Um, I'm rearranging my screens. I have a multiple screens. I'm trying to figure out where my mouse needs to be. Um, so anyway, uh, today's presenters, um, I'm going to give each one of them an opportunity to share a little bit about themselves real shortly. So my name is Dennis Conger. I work for ESD 101 and ESD 171 as Career Connected Learning Coordinator and um, CTE support. I was a CTE director for Wenatchee and OMAC, and I taught in OMAC for 20 some years before I got into administration. And I was also the director of the Spokane Skills Center for uh, five years. And um, I'm very excited to uh, work with these wonderful people. So I'm gonna give Angela just a second to share about herself. So Angela. All right. Hi, Dennis. Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Angela Kane. I am a CTE teacher and director here at Suckerk High School. I've been with the district for about uh, 20 years. I came into the CTE world through the business and industry route. I actually have a business background. I was the clerk treasurer for the town of Milling Falls for seven years and decided I wanted to get into teaching. And so I became a vocational teacher and I've worked in part-time status for a while and then worked into full-time work and as most of you know, as CT teachers, we wear many, many hats, especially in a small district. And I really enjoy it and find myself incredibly busy. Um, but I'm glad to be here today, and I hope I can be some help for some of you. And Garcy? Yeah, I'm Garcy Duncan, and I teach at Eastmont High School. I've been Teaching, this is my 30th year teaching. I spent 29 years teaching business. And this is my first year in this role. And I think technically my title is career counselor, but I have a lot of different hats. And one of them is a work-based learning coordinator where I'm teaching um, a, a class we call community partnership. But I've been a CTE teacher for many years and that's where my heart is. And I've been here at Eastmont for 20 years. And Sue is my partner in crime and directs much of this work. So I'll give Sue, you want to say something about yourself? Hi, all. I'm uh, Sue Kane. I'm a director of STEM initiatives and strategic partnerships for the North Central ESD. And I'm behind the scenes today, uh, learning alongside some amazing colleagues. And Sue is also kind of our community college uh, connection as well, because she used to be a professor at Wenatchee Valley College. Um, so we're going to move on here. So a little bit about um, the agenda. So I'd like to do some quick introductions about who's here. So we just did the um, presenters, but uh, those of you who are here from the workshop, if you could just uh, say who you are, where you're from, and um, what you hope to learn today. Um, so we'll make sure that we hit the points of what you're trying to learn here. So would it be easier if I called you out or would you rather volunteer? I see some nods on call you out. So what if I started with Heidi? I'm Heidi Emerson, uh, the CTE director for the Cooley Heartline School District. And we're just looking at some different options for courses uh, to offer our student body and what that might look like. Thank you, Heidi. Jennifer? I'm Jennifer Getz, um, the guidance teacher at ACH High School. So I'm trying to learn as much as I can because Heidi's doing such an amazing job and to come alongside her and partner and figure out the opportunities that 
um, we have available for our kids. So thanks for letting me tag in. Thank you, Jennifer. Susan? I'm Susan Duclos at Grand Coulee Dam School District, and I am a CT instructor. My director, Mark Herndon, had asked that I step in and kind of get some extra information to report back and hopefully one day roll into his position. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Tammy? Hi, everyone. I'm Tammy McBride. I'm Career Connected Learning Specialist at the North Central ESD 171 here for support and also uh, just to learn more. Thanks. Thank you. Tammy does a lot of the work with us and we wouldn't be able to do half as much without her. Matt. Hi, Ron. I'm uh, Matt Charlton, Assistant Superintendent, Eastmont School District for Secondary Ed. And uh, I'm here to learn like the rest of you. And, and we've got one of our superstars presenting, so I had to be here. I love your support for your teachers. It's awesome. James. I'm James Janko, Assistant Principal, CTE Director at Mose Lake High School. And I'm just here to see what the overall design of the Career Choices Program looks like in other schools. See what's out there. Awesome. Jim, I'm glad you joined us. Jim. Hello. Uh, I'm here to support Garcia and, uh, and learn from uh, all this, being a new director, um, trying to just get a more uh, better understanding of it and, and how I can support our programs in Garcia here. So. Thanks, Jim. Gabriella, is that I say that right? Gabrielle? Pierce? I see in the chat that she has said yeah. that uh, her internet. Yep, Gabrielle. Oh, there we are. Um, Delay. Your, your internet. Yes, I'm Gabrielle. Um, so I am here with Seattle Public Schools and I am a middle school science teacher. I um, currently work at McClure Middle School um, and I've been with the district about 10 years. Thank you. Anything you wanna to learn today? Um, so I am just strategically looking to stay up with tech norms and understanding of the resources that are out there, so. Thank you. Uh huh. Thank you, Chris Neal. Uh, oops. Hi, I'm Chris Neal. I'm the work-based learning coordinator for Battleground School District, and I just uh, I'm actually on the road and out with my employers. Well, that's a good thing to be doing. Uh, Gracie will be able to relate to that. Crystal? Um, I just wanted to learn more. Okay. Uh, or, yeah. <laughs> guys are doing pro choices and uh, getting some new ideas. Yes. So we're, okay, uh, Crystal. Hi everybody, Crystal Henderson from North Lakewood. And um, I've taught careers in the past, but I haven't taught it in a while. And I just thought I'd come and see what great ideas are out there. And I'm sorry, but my kiddo just got a drum set and he has his first drum lesson right now. So that's why I keep muting myself, but I'm happy to be here and to learn. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Hi, I'm Debbie Smith with Battleground School District Work-Based Learning. Um, Chris and I work together. We Together we have almost 300 students in our work-based learning. That's why she's still out on the road and it was kind of choppy listening to her. But um, what, what we're doing is I'm actually at the ALE and we're looking at 
we've used career choices before, but I'd like to see if we could explore some more opportunities for our AL, ALE students to do CTE courses. And so if you guys have any ideas, I know we have a great CTE program in Battleground School District, but as far as in the ALE, we're real limited. So I'm looking for some ideas. We'll see if we can uh, think about that as we go through. So the agenda is I'm gonna kind of give a, a big picture why career choices is a great choice for a lot of school districts and some of the things that it offers. And then Angela is going to share how she uses it with her junior and senior classes at Selkirk. And then Garcia will talk about a really kind of work-based learning and, and kind of the career choices part of that. And we'll have an opportunity for you guys to ask all the questions you want to ask. Um, let me move my mouse around to where it needs to be. So uh, career Choices has a zip code of 32, and it's focused on the linkage between what an individual has and what that could be supplied in the job market. Um, the instruction includes a variety and scope of available employment, how to access job information, techniques of self-analysis, et cetera. This is the description in the zip code chart from OSPI. And the class can be either 90 hours or 180. Um, and there's both models work. Um, and you'll see um, some examples of that as we move forward. You have to have a certain re a certificate to teach this class. So you the V code is what the teacher code on your certificate that says you have permission to teach this class. And you have to take a work site learning endorsement to teach this. If you went through a plan two program, a complete plan two program, you probably already have this in your pocket. Um, if you came through a university system, you may or may not, because it, sometimes it's a choice in the program. Um, I'm gonna show you how you could pick that up. So there's a list of plan two providers here. There's Bates Technical College, Central Washington, Olympic College, I'm going to talk specifically about the Online Professional Learning Academy here at ESD 101, um, South Seattle College and Southwestern Consortium. There's more than one way to get this. Um, I'm going to share one that I think is the easiest and most efficient. But um, again, this is your choice and how you want to do that. Some of these schools offer online and some offer in person. Um, and so they're different choices. RESD offers a class, it's called the Online Professional Learning Academy. And it's a CTE plan too, it's a way to get certified for CTE out of ESD 101. The beauty of this plan is it's all online um, and that it's super inexpensive. Um, the reason it's so inexpensive is because it's not university credit. You're not gonna get college credit for it, but you will get clock hours and you will get a certificate from OSPI saying you're endorsed. Um, you could do this for your complete plan two program, but I'm right now just talking about, you could take one class and get certified to teach um, the career choices class. The cost is $400, or if you want the 40 clock hours, it's $520. And then there's a class schedule here that talks about they do it in quarters, um, but you could jump in, it's self-paced. I mean, they just teach it each, the career choices is taught every quarter of the year. Um, this work-based learning is taught every quarter of the year. So you could jump in at any quarter and get this class and you could work as fast as you want. That's just your window of opportunity um, to do the work. It's all online and it's all self-paced. Um, at underneath the title there, and we'll figure out how we can send this PowerPoint out to all of you um, so that you will have the links. So the link up there gives you the link to the, the program. And for some reason, I don't have my chat up. So Sue or something, if there's questions or if you have a question, just unmute and say Dennis and ask. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit about what's in that course if you take that course. So it's administrative of worksite learning. So it's teaching 21st century skills. It's teaching career choices. 
it's also your high school and beyond plan, resumes, work-based learning, worksite le learning, legal and safety issues, being a coordinator, um, the worksite learning paperwork and record keeping, and Garcia will talk a little bit about that later. There's a lot to that. Um, and school-based enterprises and ASB law, it's, it's a lot of useful information that you will get out of that course. So one of the advantages of career choices besides, uh, we're gonna talk about how it fits in, but it um, qualifies as a CT dual credit class, um, at least at Wenatchee Valley College. And I think you can make the argument with whatever community college you're closest to. And we're gonna share a business ed class that it um, has been certified or articulated with with Wenatchee Valley College. Wenatchee Valley College calls that class professional work relations and they grant three credits for that class. I wanted to show you the competencies um, that align with the Wenatchee Valley class. So they got it under BCT 116 and it's their articulation competencies. So it talks about identifying the challenges influence today's workplace environment, um, understanding ethical behavior standards, um, managing your stress as you look for work and as you work, effective communication and teamwork, um, your motivation, whether it's internal or external, um, understanding various leadership styles and explaining and identifying factors influencing diversity in the workplace. All of these things are taught in your high school career choices class. You may not have worded it the exact same way, but as you make your frameworks up and as you look at the standards, you can align it to get this articulation. So the course topics in that class are workplace roles, knowing what your role is and how you need to accept your role and how you move through different roles as you work at an organization, how you communicate in an organization and the proper way to handle email and, and phone communication and personal communication, um, your values and ethics, you know, being an honest, good employee, leadership and motivation. And you can see down through this list. And one of the things that you see on almost every career uh, choices class is like resume, interview techniques, today's job market, professional development, um, those kinds of things all fit in that career choices class. I wanted to give you a picture of what kind of paperwork you'd have to fill out to get that articulation. So the next three are just quick slides of um, what it takes to get that articulation. And, and, and you can see that it's really fairly straightforward here. This is just all contact information. This one here, you talk about your course description and goals, the length of the course, your high school credits, how many hours, um, if you what the name of your books or what do you use it for resources, for materials, some list of the competencies. And if you look at the competencies I shared with you out of the BCT class, you just kind of regurgitate some of that language down here. And, and it's not a stretch because that's what you're teaching. And then expectations of student performance, et cetera. Um, <laughs> so anyway, every community college has their own process and they all have their own forms, but their forms are all very similar. So whether you're doing a community college closer to battleground, or you're going to do it with Big Bend Community College, or you're going to do it with uh, Spokane Community College, it's all pretty much the same process. And the fact that you know that this course is already articulated with Wenatchee Valley College gives you leverage with all of your other community colleges. And if they don't articulate with you, you can go to Wenatchee Valley College no matter where you are in the state and articulate it for credit. One of the things you may not know about career choices is it fits with every CTE graduation pathway. So if you're really a small district like Almay or Cooley Heartline, so if you had taught one business ed class and career choices, you have a pathway in business ed. If you taught one career choices in an ag class, you have a pathway in ag. 
et cetera. So it pairs with any pathway. Um, so you have to have two classes, which I just described. It has to lead to, and I want to I emphasize the lead to the national certificate or credential. They don't have to achieve that in high school. They have to be in the pathway to achieve that. So they could pick that up at the community college or they could pick that up in their apprenticeship or they could pick that up in their bachelor's degree or they could pick that up in on the job training. You just have to des describe the pathway that it leads to and how you help them get there. If you can get them the credential in high school, awesome but um, you don't have to. Um, the courses need to be in a progression. So the career choices would be your exploratory class. Your next class has to be a preparatory class. Um, and the zip code chart's pretty clear about that when you look on the OSPI what, uh, zip code chart, it'll tell you what classes are preparatory, which classes are exploratory. And then it leads to workforce entry and then exists in a single program area. If it's not in a single program area, you can petition OSPI to look at a different pathway and why it makes sense. And there's a form that you have to fill out to do that. I would encourage you to look on OSPI's website. They have a whole list of ones that have already been approved. And the one you're thinking of is probably already done, but you still have to apply for it. But that's kind of a something for another one. So now I'm going to let you talk to the real stars of the show, the people who do this every day and have a, a plan on what they want to do. And so Angela, when you want me to move forward in your slides, you just let me know. Um, so this is a picture of Angela's uh, high school. They're in beautiful northeast far corner of Washington State. You could, you, know, you might have to hit the golf ball twice to get it to the border <laughs> of Canada. What is it, 15 miles? Uh, uh, they're right on the Ponderay River, and uh, it's a very beautiful setting. So, Angela, it's all yours. All right. Well, thank you, Dennis. And um, I am by no means an expert, as Dennis suggested. Um, I have been doing it for uh, quite some time. Um, I just thought uh, when Dennis asked me to present um, how we do it at Selkirk, the one thing I do want to point out, though, is that Selkirk is very small. We are a one-day school. Um, this is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is just one of my many hats. And uh, for the, the career choices class, I try to put as much into that as I possibly can uh, that fits within that framework. And so on this first slide, you'll see that this is the first 90 hours of my framework. So it, it happens during my junior year. And um, one of the many things that we focus on during that junior year is their high school and beyond plans. And um, Selkirk uses the my school uh, data, the district links, which is a part of our Skyward program. So if you're using Skyward and not accessing that, I, I would strongly suggest that you do. It lays it out very well. It's very easy to use and it uh, carries over from year to year. So you're never recreating your document. It's there for the students. And they access that um, with their Skyward accounts. One thing I can tell you though, is make sure that they remember their username and passwords because if they don't remember it, you have a 24 hour lag from when they reset it until when they can actually get into it. So that's just a little tip that um, we've struggled with over the years. And so, you know, if you're using that and you, they can't get in, that's probably wise because they had to reset their passwords. Um, we focus on the graduation pathways. I actually have the career counselor comes in during the junior year, during my career choices class, and they go over all the individual pathways during this time. Um, Selkirk has an activity chart that uh, the students create when they're freshmen. They really start adding to them heavily their junior year, um, which leads right into our community service requirements. So at Selkirk, uh, we do an um, other on our leadership component for our frameworks. We are so small that it's very, very difficult for us to be part of extra groups. And so one of our other requirements in that leadership is that students have to do 25 hours of community service their junior and senior year and really have them focus on well, obviously the community service has to happen after school hours and um, they're able to focus on not only services uh, within the community, but also service organizations. So for example, uh, the Lions Club or 
the Cater Theater in Medling Falls has sort of all sorts of activities that they um, offer and the students will help with those activities. Um, we have, oh, so my in-demand and my positive growth career exploration lessons. So during my career choices class, uh, not every single career that we research, but most of the careers that we research all have a positive growth and they're considered in demand and many of them are STEM professionals. We do, um, our career lessons all pertain to their learning style and their personalities. We try and help them figure out, okay, if this is your area of strength, let's try and match you up with a career that um, goes along with your strength. Um, they really um, enhance their portfolios their junior year, which then carries over into their senior year. Um, we do a little bit of ASVAB prep. We use the career exploration, the ASVAB career exploration finder. Um, they actually come into the school and administer the ASVAB here at Selkirk. And the SAT prep. So I use SAT prep as kind of a filler as far as when students finish with assignments or I'm working with other students and they're waiting for me, I have them log on to Khan Academy and they do their um, little bit of SAT prep. Um, the student path lessons are all online. If you haven't used those, I can get you information on those. Um, they have a huge range of what they offer. And um, I just pick and choose to find um, specific lessons for, I try and match them up with the personalities of the students that I have that year. Um, most of our career exploration is done online. And um, we use an EverFi program, which is an online simulation. If you are not familiar with that, um, you can message me directly and I can get information on that. And I use the Keys to the Future program their junior year. And then um, once they are at the end of their semester for career exploration or career choices for junior year, they need to actually present their career of their choice to a group of their peers. And then um, they'll do it in class and then they um, take questions and do all sorts of answering. And it really just prepare them then because we actually use that then their senior year. So Dennis, if you wanna flip to the next slide there. Sure, you wanna tell them real quick about that picture? Oh, sure. Um, and that is our wastewater program. And here at Selkirk, we actually have a wastewater class and that is our wastewater plant. The students actually, um, it, part of this class, they go out and they take samples and they do the recordings. And it's actually a business because our students will actually do the lab testings for um, the town of Milling Falls, the town of Madeline, uh, Seattle City Light. Um, in the past, they had done them for the Pondery Mine and town of I Ion, I believe, brings their samples up. The students will test them. And they actually go through the process then of billing. And so that this, this entity actually, um, this class makes money from the billing the different uh, municipalities within the county. So it's a pretty cool class. And um, there's not many of them in the state. It's the only one that I'm aware of, actually. <laughs> Yeah, so we're working with Dennis. Uh, we've got a little bit of a snag right now, but working, working with Dennis to try and do a career launch with that class. All right, so our senior year, um, the second half of our career choices uh, framework, I work with the students on um, filling out college applications. Uh, we do final drafts of those activity charts that we really worked on their junior year, and they use those then for their college applications and scholarships. Uh, they finish up their community service. Uh, we create uh, the FAFSA in class. So the students will create their accounts in class. I'll go over all the different tabs that are involved with the FAFSA. And then they need to go home and finish that with their parents. Um, the sophomore, or excuse me, their senior year is when we do a mock interview. And I am actually working on that right now. So I have a panel of industry professionals and we are via Zoom the last two years doing this. Normally it used to be in person, but we're via Zoom right now. And um, the students will actually create a reference page. They create their cover letters and their resumes and their job applications, and they will submit everything. Um, they'll pre 
they'll present that during their mock interviews. Um, Angela, there, have, uh, go ahead. Did you have a question? question in the chat? Um, is it a 90 hour or 180 hour course? It's 180. Thank you. Yeah, it's 90 the junior year and 90 the senior year. I'm sorry, can you go back to your other screen just for one second? The junior year one. Perfect. Thank you. I just want to take a picture. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, those portfolios that we started really working on those junior years, they actually present that, well, when we were in person anyway, <laughs> they presented that during their mock interviews. Unfortunately, it makes it very difficult to do via Zoom, but they'll still have those portfolios that they can take then with them out into the real world. And we do encourage those students to take them then when they're doing their actual job interviews, right, as soon as they graduate. Um, I've had a lot of positive feedback from the industry professionals. They uh, really like the fact that they have everything in one spot, they're organized, and then they just add to them as they go along. Um, senior presentations, that's part of our requirement that we have with our high school and beyond plan as well. And the senior year, it's usually the last event and activity that they do their senior year. And they present their portfolio to their parents and a group of peers. And this year will be via Zoom as well. Last year was our first year of doing a Zoom. And I will tell you some real positive things came from that. We had a lot of students that were able to uh, send their grandparents in particular, their Zoom links, and they were able to watch their senior presentations where they've never been able to really be involved before because they, a lot of them live far away. And so there was really some positive things that came from that, you know, that whole debacle last year when we we're trying to figure out how to get everything to work together. And um, it was a pretty neat thing that came about. I, I sat in on all of those presentations and some, a lot of smiles and a lot of proud grandparents and family members that had never seen those presentations before. So that was really very cool. And then the last thing I wanna focus on the senior year is we use that EverFi program again, their senior year. And it has um, a financial literacy component to it and um, where they're working on investments. And then there is a debit versus credit section to it. And then there's a, another program within the EverFi where they're talking about college loans and the repayment process. So I know that my career choices framework is very different from some. We have a very different focus than others, but it all is preparing them to go out into the world to work as far as what's there and what they need to have in order to be successful. So if any of you are interested, I'd be more than happy to um, share my framework. And I know Dennis is gonna send this PowerPoint out as far as these all the different components that are in my classes. Um, the one thing I do want to point out my senior year, though, it is partnership with independent living. And so they actually have senior careers all year long. It's just like, a, for example, it would be like a Monday, Wednesday, and then independent living would be Tuesday, Thursday. And I say that because Buckwork is on a four-day school week. And so we're only um, those four days instead of five. And they've been in person all year. Yes, we have been in person all year. And Angela, what was that one story you told me the student said he didn't know how to do and you added it to the program? You know, and Dennis, I didn't have you put that on there because I was, was that really falls more into the, in the independent living side of it. Oh. But I encourage all my students um, once they get out into the real world, if there's something that they encounter that they didn't know how to do. I always ask them to shoot me an email and say, hey, Mrs. Kane, you know, you prepared us for all these things, but I didn't know what to do when I went to the emergency room. I had no idea how to fill out a medical form. So I've actually added that to my independent living curriculum as far as we actually fill out a medical form, as far as what you would do and how you fill it out and what information is on your insurance card and how you present that information. So it's really not a career choices component. It's more like an independent living. living. But um, definitely a senior year issue, <laughs> and we've added that. Well, I think that's a great question to ask your students to come back and tell you if they, um, there's something they wish they would have known. Um, do you want to do 
we'll do all the questions at the end. So we'll give Darcy a chance to uh, share her program, which is um, quite a bit different. It's really kind of the, the work-based learning component as you get through the, the career choices. Uh, you can see that uh, Eastmont High School is slightly different than Selkirk High School. Um, they built a new school a few years ago and they should be very proud of it. It's a beautiful building. Um, I was always jealous of you, Jim, that you get that high school done. Uh, so, Garcy, let's talk about your program. Well, Angela's kind of a tough, tough act to follow. That, those are just some amazing things that you can do. And I, I hear those things and I get envious of smaller schools because there is really a true advantage um, with some of those kinds of things that you can do in a small school. And if if we were to tackle some of those things, it's monumental when we have four to 500 just seniors to try to work through. So, so it's really neat. Those are some really neat things. And our career choices is completely different. Um, it's more of just um, worksite learning and doesn't incorporate all those um, high school and beyond things. Uh, we kind of do the high school and beyond things in uh, a number of different areas in our school um, through we do have financial literacy and things like that. But the way our program is set up, um, you know, a student has a job. Oops, my office light just turned off. <laughs> I've been sitting too long. Um, the student comes to me, usually they've already have a job and they fill out an application to be a part of the program. There's some requirements, for instance, you have to be uh, it, either currently enrolled in a CTE class or have taken a CTE class. Um, you have to have the ability to earn 180 work hours within um, our trimester. We're on trimesters, so that's a 12 week window. Um, so those are the main, that's the main focus. And then as far as my curriculum, we kind of focus on soft skills. Um, I communicate with employers and making sure that our kids are, um, you have, that they have the proper soft skills when they go to them so that we can, if we don't, we can enhance those in some of our CTE programs and in the program I have here. Um, the student receives a release period. So um, we're kind of in this virtual thing where right now we're on a one, a three period day, if you can imagine there are a hundred minutes. Um, and we actually only go for six weeks, we divided our um, trimester into two just for the whole virtual situation, but the kids are still working over the 12 week period. But anyway, they get one class period off um, and that's either the morning. So that means they worked really late at night. So they're you know coming in later or they're leaving school early so they, they can go to their job. Um, and so in order to get credit for that, um, not only do they have to work 180 work hours, but I have some assignments that I give them that kind of emphasize those soft skills and, and job related type of things. Um, so I work with the kids as far as communicating with them and I, I communicate with their employer um, to see how things are going um, with that. Um, they can be a junior or senior to take the class. Um, I think typically it's been a one year thing. Like I said, this is my very first year in this position, but I um, communicate a lot with the former instructor who retired and then I was friends with her. So last year we communicated a lot before she started, but so I think typically they take it their senior year, but it is offered junior and senior if, year if they like. Um, and of course, it's just like they have a job, so they have to um, um, transport themselves and all that kind of thing. Um, let's see. They... Uh, I think I covered everything. So let's go to the next slide, Dennis. You okay. Um, well, and before I talk about this, um, really what happened when we went virtual, uh, the former instructor, really the, the kids came to her and got paperwork. They turned things into her on paper. And so it really forced me to put everything um, online, which was great. We use Google Classroom. So that's a really great form for them to submit things. They submit the, the assignments I get, give them, but also they have to give me copies of their pay stubs so I can keep track of their hours. And um, we have a pretty elaborate spreadsheet that we have to submit to the state um, for numbers. So I, I have to keep really good um, 
data on all of that. And uh, so virtual actually has been okay um, as far as community partnerships. But I would really like to see um, this program expand a little bit more to where we develop community, community partnerships with um, employers. So they're coming to me and saying, hey, I have a job that I would like to fill. And then I have some kids that I can grab. And it would maybe be more like an internship, but maybe a paid internship. Um, and I would like to also uh, work with Reva over at the college. And uh, we have uh, we have an extensive dual credit program at Eastmont. A lot of our ag, business, family consumer science um, classes are uh, articulated. So I would like to add this as well to that. Um, so that's some things I'd like to do to expand. Okay, next slide. Like I said, and Angela, you know, they keep calling us rock stars and we're professionals in this, but this is my first year and I've learned so much in this first year and I have the ability to ask questions of the former, um, the former instructor. So that's been very beneficial to me. We have a very um, supportive administration for CTE. Our CTE programs are really great, um, but how I got into it, um, I really liked what the coordinator was doing before and I knew that you know, I taught business for 29 years. And so it was kind of fun to have a little bit of a change. So I did my worksite learning endorsement through Eastern and it was all online. It was great, just like all um, education programs are, but it never actually prepares you for, you know, what you get. So you learned a lot of uh, little law type things that you could probably learn on the, the LNI site and things like that. Um, and through the, the packet, the guide for work-based learning. But it really takes jumping into the program and every day you really don't know what you don't know. So you have to ask a lot of questions and it's nice to have someone to ask as you're going. Um, so that's been um, really well. One thing that I think needs to be worked on is a really good um, communication line between administrators and counseling staff because the counseling office doesn't always know um, when you have such a broad spectrum of courses that they're encouraging their kids to get into. Um, they don't always know what your classes um, provide and the requirements. So it's really important to be in close contact with the counselors. So they, they know what it is you're teaching in the class and, and the requirements. Um, so I think that's it. I think the next slide is, I'd already kind of talked about the virtual, I believe. Was there another slide or was that it? This one here, yes. Yeah. So, oh, in the virtual, we do have to make site visits and contacts with, um, with employers. So one thing that's been creative through this is I had a student that actually, we did a FaceTime with each other and she took me on a tour of her work site through FaceTime. And so I thought, well, you know, that's actually a great idea to do. And it really helps with scheduling. Um, I could do it from my home even when she's working at night and I don't, I don't have to schedule a time at night to go visit her at her job. So it, it actually worked really good. So, and then having assignments done online makes it a little easier on the students not having to come find me to turn things in um, and it, it's worked really good. So that's Eastmont so far this year. You know, Garcia, I saw uh, on a national thing, they were talking about um, how to get virtual uh, on-site internships. And so what they did was they asked the company, give me a list of five or six things that you don't have the manpower or the time to get to right now. And then they give that list to the students and the students pick from that list and they try to solve that problem for the business. And then they, they get a mentor in that business who they communicate back and forth with. Then at the end, they present their solutions, whether they're practical or not. But I thought that was a great idea. And it's something that a company could bite off on is five or six things they don't have the time or energy to get to. And let's put some kids to work in the problem and see if they can maybe help us with an answer. Um, you know, FBLA, the CTSO club, um, offers a, a competition at their state level called a hackathon and it's very similar to that and they get businesses um, to come in with problems for the kids to solve and yeah it's a great tool to teach them too and kids that's kind of what kids really like to do these days 
solve problems to make things easier and faster and more efficient. It's a way that it could work virtually in teams. Right, right. So in just a second, I'm going to show you a, a framework. Yeah, well, just one second, Dennis. There was one question for oh, Garth. Sure. In terms of the, um, the V codes, did you need an extra V code for instructional worksite learning in addition to the one that Dennis was talking about for career choices? No, under it's under bus the business program of study, right, Dennis? The worksite learning one covers career choices, so it's the same V code. Thank you. So. Angela already volunteered to share her framework. Here's a, the front page of her framework. If you're not familiar with CTE ones, um, this doesn't give you a whole bunch of information, but I just wanted to put it here to let you know that we can share that framework out. It's because she's given us permission to do so. <clears throat> and here's another one. Um, the advantage of this one is you could look at their units and see how many of the hours they spend per unit. You could do the same thing with Angela's framework. It's just that hers was laid out a little differently. And this exactly. one's a, shoot, it's six years old now, but a lot of this information doesn't change much. Dennis, I will say too that um, I was actually working on my framework a little bit today as far as um, under my competencies, listing out all the individual things that I do. So um, if anyone does want that, the actual version that I have right now is a little more detailed than the one that Dennis is presenting now. Awesome. So we'll get the updated version. And thank you, Angela, for being willing to share. You're welcome. And I would be willing to show, share Eastmont's too if their program is looks more like ours. Okay. Awesome. And I I was gonna hit Jim up if I didn't have it yet, Garcy. <laughs> Um, and I would like to tag off of what uh, Garcia said too, as far as I agree 100% that the things that I am able to do in a small district, you, there is no way you would be able to do that in a big district. And um, I think that our students definitely have an advantage because I'm working with 20 to 25 students versus 500 students. And so we're able to just pack so much more into those hours in a day. Um, so my framework, probably is not very realistic for a large school. It, it is definitely designed for a small setting. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And with that said, Angela, though, having worked in both OMAC, which is small, but bigger than Selkirk, but, and then Wenatchee, which is large, I think in a larger school, you sometimes you could have smaller like uh, groups or academies that you could run that through. Or you could say it's a, a choice that um, kids rotate through. Um, and you could probably do a lot of what you're doing um, in a larger school as well. I would like to open it up now for any of your wonderings of our guests. What are your questions? What would you like to talk about? What did we not answer that maybe we can try to come up with an answer for you? Um, so don't be shy, you can just, uh, I'm gonna get rid of my share and then I can see the chat. <laughs> what do you, does anybody out there have some questions? And Susan, I'm glad that you're able to join us and you're done teaching classes up there in Manson. No questions? Something you didn't get, something that you'd like to get? A quick question for Garcia. I was wondering when you guys are on uh, trimester, so are you given a, a credit and a half for the year then? A half a credit each one? Yes, I believe that's how it is. And um, But they still have to, you know, before they had to get 180 hours in um, a semester, I believe it was. Right. And now they have to get it in a shorter, little bit shorter period of time. Yeah, so how many, so they're going to get quite a few hours in that 180 hours in that 12 week time then, right? Yes, but it's still doable under the minor working laws. Yeah, okay. I just curious, I know some other people have asked about that. We're, we're semesters, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, Debbie Smith and I have got about 260 work-based learning students, but I just thought I'd ask you that in case somebody else asked me again down the road. I have a question. Um, 
in our area, finding employment for our youth is really difficult. We just don't have a lot of entities to reach out to. So what do you do for the students that really want to participate in this, but maybe can't find an actual position? Or are there compensations that you use or different paths that you can give them or they just can't obviously be part of the work source part of it? So Susan, I do, um, because I'm from a very, very small rural community. Um, we don't have a lot of job opportunities either. And that is one of the reasons that we require our students to do community service because they do learn a lot of those job specific skills by performing community service. And so if nothing else, it gives them some skill when they're headed off into a larger community where they can actually find a job. They've already then been exposed to that organization or the, um, the show them up on time, the responsibility factors and, and some of those real basic skills that you learn from community service, even though it wasn't in a work site learning experience, it's, um, those are transferable skills. Okay. And so that is one of the reasons that we do that is because we are in that situation. It sounds like maybe similar to you that we just do not have a lot of job opportunities for our students. So our district already requires 50 hours of community service by the time they're seniors. They can get it, you know, several hours, 25 hours their senior year. Um, so would you maybe require if they were in the part of that program more than that 25 or? Well, here we require 25 hours. It's a combined total of their junior and senior year. And so uh, I really encourage the students to do it during their summer hours, just because they're so busy during the school year. So that summer leading up to their junior year and then that summer leading up to their senior year. Um, I just encourage them to do it during that time. And if they haven't got it done in their senior year, then we help them find something to do during the senior year after school and on the weekends. Okay, so if I'm understanding then your community service projects that they do or hours that they serve can be used in place of the work source? Or? Well, it's not in place of the work source. We just have them, we have them do the community service because those are the transferable skills that you would use then on a work site. Okay. Your kids are in class, right, Angela? When they're doing their community service? No, your your actual class. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. I've had, my kids are all in classroom. Yeah, another advantage that we have, they're, okay. they're in the classroom. So there's no hours in the day that they're not with you getting credit for it? No. Nope. Okay. okay. I see that there's a question about uh, a good soft skills program. Does anybody have uh, a recommendation? Angela or Garcy or Sue? I, I just have um, just a lot of resources that the former instructor used and there's if I find something like specific a specific site that I really use I'll send that on Crystal. Um, and I'll look through my stuff and I can try to maybe look to see, pick up the good ones that I have, but I do just a ton of searching online, basically. I know if it is a um, junior, senior, some of our sophomores, if the students are 16 and over, there's actually some soft skills courses on LinkedIn learning. Um, and you can actually get certificates and those are right now, I think this year, those uh, courses are available at no cost too. I see a, a LinkedIn learning fan in the chat too. We are big fans here as well. And so that's an awesome question, story. Oh, sorry, Dennis. The one Why suggestion I would really? have for- oh, Go ahead, Angela, I'm sorry. <laughs> the one suggestion I would have for soft skills is to look at that student paths. Um, it's a free program and there's 50 different lessons and many of them are related to soft skills. That would be my one suggestion. Can you put that in the chat, please? Sure. Another path, all of your CTSOs, your student leadership organizations have soft skills training as part of their leadership curriculum. So FFA has a very strong curriculum. DECA has a very strong curriculum. Uh, 
FBLA has a very strong curriculum <laughs> and so on. Um, so that's one that I would look to too, and those are free. Any other questions? I have a question, Dennis. For the career choices to be part of a graduation pathway, does it have to be uh, 90 hours or 180? It can be 90. Okay. It's combined with quite a few different courses too. I did, I snagged this link, I'll go ahead and put it in the chat, but if you have not had a chance to look at the approved ones around the state, that's a going to download a spreadsheet for you that has all of the approved CTE grad pathways. Where you're combining unlike or yes, more than one pathway. In combination with something in a different program area. Thank you. And with career choices, you don't have to apply for any of that if it's just two classes in your district because it fits with any of the pathways. Yep. That's a real advantage to the class. Mm -hmm. As well as um, I think, you know, as Angela does, I think it's a wonderful vehicle to get your high school and beyond plan done. I know a lot of school districts struggle to figure out where they're going to put that and how they want to get that out, rolled out to kids. I wonder too, Dennis, if you want to mention the conversation that you were having with the middle school who was thinking about, um, you know, even offering this potentially as a middle school STEM. Yeah, so we have a middle school, very small middle school that where their students actually go to three different high schools when they leave that middle school. They have a choice of going to three different school districts because they're a K-8 district. So they're looking at a career choices class that would open the doors for students' minds to see all the possibilities and to prepare them for whichever high school they go to. Of course, to do that in a middle school, you have to be STEM. So they're looking at ways to include the technology standards and the science standards um, in the computer science standards to make that uh, a STEM course and how they go about teaching it um, if they concentrate, for example, some local projects on um, natural resources or um, they have, you know, they're in a, the apple growing industry, they're also part of the hydroelectric industry, they have the opportunity to do some very targeted STEM projects just to show them what that career field looks like that's local. And that might be a way to get that program a STEM class. There's not very many career choices classes. In fact, uh, this may be the first in the state um, as a middle school course. Some of those students have come to you, Jim. <laughs> Anything else from anybody? Did you find out what you wanted to know? I know there was a question about ALE. Um, CT doesn't have a real large presence in ALE. Um, you, you still have to do the certified teacher. You still have to do the leadership components and all those kinds of things, which sometimes is very difficult in a ALE program where you're trying to get more flexibility. I know at Eastmont, um, at least the way it's been, is that if a student is in ALE, they can still come to the high school for one or may possibly two periods a day. I can't remember how many. And then that's usually where they pick up their CTE classes during that time. Well, I mean, we're a little bit early, but um, you know we're open to questions. If you want to hang out and ask something else, you're welcome. If you don't have anything, I don't want you to sit here and stare at the screen awkwardly and be uncomfortable. <laughs> I'll make a request if you um, if you have a suggestion for an upcoming topic for some CTE perspectives that you would like us to gather. We wanted to be able to create this uh, periodically to to pull some resources together. So. Um, you can drop those in a chat or reach out to Dennis or myself and uh, we'll try to set these up as a afternoon conversation, kind of this, this less 
format and work of uh, what you're interested in. Thank you, everybody. Nicole, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah. Um, so this year, we actually have career choices for the first time. And really, what it is, is kind of like Angela's, but on a, in some aspects, a bigger scale, and in others, a smaller scale. But um, we figured out if we were at the table actually creating we a brand new curriculum this year for our high school and beyond stuff. And um, if we are CTE is at the table with actual the curriculum development, then um, we can we could put in a framework for career choices with that framework or with that curriculum in mind. And then even though the entire uh, teaching all the teachers are teaching this course um, with only about 15 kids each, then um, those teachers that I have as CTE courses, teachers, we can count those teachers towards CTE funding. So we figured out a magic little box on Skyward where the first count day was, was horrid because every teacher in the whole building was coming up on my count. And all of a sudden I had to go back and work with the registrar person to get that magic box figured out. And we went back and forth with the ESD and OSPI and everybody trying to skyward itself, trying to figure out how to make it work. But we finally figured it out. And, um, and it's been really nice in this time of a lot of people lost funding and stuff because their bell schedules went wanky. But because of getting to count that period, even though it's a smaller period, it's still um, the um, 180 hours because all of our periods went longer except for that one. Um, but um, it was nice to be able to count it still. I have a question for you, Nicole. Mm -hmm. uh, do all your CTE teachers that were counting that, do they have to have their um, work-based learning endorsement? Yes, they do. Oh, okay. And did you run it through all CTE? Like, um, egg and family consumer oh wow all the type two certification we have a lot of type two certification people and all of them have that work based oh. learning certification so that helped a lot we had two that did not out of everybody so we had to work on those ones but yeah pretty nice i didn't know when we first were trying to brainstorm how not to lose funding we figured that out so but it almost didn't work i was panicking when i saw the first count day because it was way over what it should have been <laughs> that's called being creative nicole nice work <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do during these times <laughs> any other final comments from anybody who's uh, been able to join us today Thank you all, and please uh, send us an email or a chat and let us know if there's a different topic, you know, whether it's CT graduation pathways or CLNA or uh, another program that you have some interest in. Um, we'd like to see if we can gather some people to share some information as Sue put out earlier in her invitation. And thank you to Angela and Garcy for being willing to step up and do this for us. You have no idea how much I appreciate the both of you. And you're lucky, Jim, to have such good people working there with you. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Bye-bye. Bye. Dennis, I have a question if you can hear me. I can hear you. Yay! I did hear her. She's frozen on my screen. Um, can, currently can certain text? educators. Sure. I you're you're cutting in and out. I was having a very hard time understanding you.
Dennis, there's a message in the chat uh, requesting that framework copy. Are you just going to send those out to the registered emails? Yes. Okay. I'll get Angela's updated copy and then I'll send it out to everybody. Have you seen, you know, current educators can earn a CT endorsement through online training? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Is this, you had a resource shared, I thought in the, maybe it was on a shared screen. Which link is that in the chat? That I got kicked out on that. I was just in, I'm a science teacher. I have science and math. And I've been, like I said at the beginning, compelled to just know more and be more of a, an asset when it comes to this type of work. Um, perfect. Okay. Thank you. But I will email you the PowerPoint with a link and I'll email out uh, the frameworks um, to everybody who was registered. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Sue.